They did go out and they screwed as many girls as they could and they took copious amounts of drugs and they drank loads of alcohol and they partied. I've done all right before the band. I don't need a band to get girls. <laughs> <laughs> it does help. It does help, doesn't it? <laughs> If you take five boys on the road, as you're growing into an artist, so it feels like it's a five year puppet ride, mm. you know, for the first five years. So you do this, do that. And then when you actually turn into an artist and, and, and you realise, yeah, man, I can do this and I'm getting better at it, everyone kind of goes, no, thank you. Because he's a lead singer, he's getting not fed up with singing the songs, you know what I mean? But he wanted to do a bit more R&B, mm. his style of singing. And I think because he started doing that, Tom didn't really like that, do you know what I mean? And I think Tom and Brian's always had this thing, and I always remember Tom always turning around and saying, I'll make sure you never work again. Do you know what I mean? So, well, and you that failed, was back mate. then. You failed. Brian put himself into dope oblivion on so many occasions, and I don't think he can even remember half of the history of E17. I just had a big row with the management and said, look, I'm not happy, I'm run down, I'm tired, I need some time off. You're getting this next single going. What about the time off that you said we was going to have? So everyone said to me, OK, Brian. And I've just shouted at everyone and said, I want to take everyone to new management because we want to make R&B, we want to do what we want to do. And I thought, I'm not going to be your puppet no more. The management contract's going to end. And I think because I had a go and I read up, the management must have just went, well, he's not on our side no more, is he? I'm not interested in those kind of theatrics or that kind of pantomime. It was all too much for me, and, and that was it, really. So I washed my hands of it. What happened next would see Brian and E17 decline into scandal and break up. Brian Harvey, the lead singer of the pop group East 17, has apologised for saying in a radio interview that the drug ecstasy was safe. He now says that the remark was stupid. I've done 12 one, one night, you know what I mean? Loads of them, I've been off it on them, do you know what I mean? And the thing is, is if you bang one, you go out, you have a good night. And that's what people want to do. And really, in the long run, it's, it's a safe pill and it ain't doing you no harm. I don't see the problem. I don't care what anyone says, mate, I will set up at the end, yeah? I will set up. And um, I was asked to do an interview on my own. I'd done it. The guy asked me how many I'd done and how I felt. And he was a new journalist. The guy was trying to make a name for himself. All he needed was two quotes. By 5.30 the next morning, mate, I was public enemy number one. And that's how you get rid of your lead singer out of a band. Baby, if you got to go away, don't think I could take the pain. Won't you stay alive? The consequence of that outburst was a very convenient junction for me to say, you know, I've had it. And quite frankly, I was bored with it. I mean, I spent more time with criminal lawyers trying to get him in and out of scenarios that he put us in. So I think it was, it was a perfect junction to, to end this party before he got any more sour. Don't you know we've come too far now Just to go and try to throw it out Brian was clearly, and still is, bless him, a complete one-off. A unique guy in that way, and uniquely honest as well. And, um, you know, it was going to cause the death of that band. The press... One 22-year-old boy, they just came for me. If you do drugs in public or say it's okay to do drugs, then to be honest, you deserve to be caned for it, really. Brian Harvey made a huge mistake, and I bet he didn't even know he was doing it at the time, and that's the, that's the terrible thing, because he's a really talented guy. And the fallout that he got from that, he just, he just probably was blown away by that. And I, I doubt he's ever really recovered. Don't you say it's the final the amount of pressure that them press can put on a person, I can't even begin to tell you what that done to me. From, from then, that is when my life started going wonky in 97, after that ecstasy come in. That is the thing that is responsible for putting me in the nut house twice. Um, it was the added pressure that I didn't need that nearly made me commit suicide. Well, tried to commit suicide twice then. Um, sunk me into the deepest depression that I thought I was never going to come out of. I've got to be honest, 
I can see why they're there, I know they're there to do a job, but I am fucking disgusted with them people. They're, they're murderers. <clears throat> they nearly murdered me, mate. They really did. And, and they need to know that, you know? They need to know the kind of, the power that they, they, they're aware of the power that they have, but what they can actually do to, to an individual. It ruined me, and I'm only just coming back from it now. The funny thing is, I have to ask myself, is would I change any of it? I wouldn't change none of it, because it's made me the person that I am now. And I'm actually quite happy with who I am now. Brian Harvey found out the hard way what the full glare of the media spotlight can feel like. But, as we'll see after the break, it didn't stop others doing whatever it takes to chase the increasingly elusive boy band dream. If you ask me now, it... The difference between the Take That comeback and the East 17 comeback is very simple. Take That went out on top. Any band that goes out that way ends up coming back. When they do the comeback, they've got to start from there. Take That started from there. They was always the winners in this country, we was always the underdogs, but that's alright because we're not expected that to hit number one every time, whereas they are now. We're not. We can come out, we can creep out with a 46. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good one, wasn't it? 46. <laughs> Where there was them, there was us. They haven't got the full line up and neither have we, but we can still do the job. I would never encourage you, 17 and I never have to get back together. I think once it's over, it's over. Don't you know we've come too far now? This is strictly paying the bills, paying the bills, paying the rent, paying the gas, electric. I mean, if the boys need a few quid to carry on living, well, good luck to them. I mean, we go away now, we go and do gigs, and we're in Europe and, and Russia and stuff, and there's 20,000 people there. Still winning awards. Yeah, <laughs> from uh, Exit FM in Russia. We love, we love East 17. Oof, oof, oof. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was for uh, not coming back for five years. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to hope that this year we can get back out there and just make records because if we can do that, mate, we'd be the happiest people on earth. Brian and the boys may still make it. All the nostalgia might fizzle out again for a few more years, but there will always be a place in the hearts and record collections of many UK fans for their favourite boy band.